Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. Today we are going to look in on the European night crawlers and continue our compare and contrast of an older bin that's been running for years and then another bin that is over there that has only been running for three months. So let's dive right in and see if I'm about ready to get some sort of castings over here. Looks like it's finally getting drier. The temperatures are getting lower and uh, although it is raining, it does feel less humid down here. All right, let me put you down. All right, so this is the finished end. If you're new here, uh, this is a wedge system. I'll put a diagram up above for you. But the wedge system goes on the principle of the more finished end is down here. And the worms uh, slowly migrate in that direction to where there is new food and new bedding and also better moisture. So when we look at this side, what we should be seeing is nice, rich, finished castings, and then also not very many worms. In addition to that, it should start drying off. And that, in combination of there not being any food left, will cause the worms to say, you know what, I think I'm gonna move on to someplace else. And luckily, that is exactly what appears to be happening here, finally. It has been so damp in the basement here that the castings haven't been able to dry out at all, which of course makes the worms not want to move. If I dig down really deep in the bin here, you can see how very muddy those castings have got. And that down there deep, there is still some worms in there. That's why I get in here about once a month and fluff everything up so that the worms have an opportunity or maybe a little prompting from me to get out of this part of the bin and go to the part with the food and the bedding so that I can get a harvest hopefully next time. Doesn't look like it's it's not dry enough and we still do have some worms so I'm not going to try and harvest this. I'm going to continue to let the worms work through it and slowly as it dries out the worms will move but it definitely is progress from the last time that we looked in on these European night crawlers. Excellent, now let's look at the feeding side of the bin. Okay, continuing talking about the wedge system here. Everything over here was fed last month and the stuff that is here in the middle section here was fed probably two to three months ago. So we will expect to find lots more worms in a much higher uh, moisture in this area and that, that's exactly what we're seeing here. It also gives me the opportunity as I'm fluffing this up and moving it around to pull out any big chunks that need to go um, back to the beginning. So let me know, have you ever tried the wedge system? I know a lot of people are starting to like it because basically you don't have to extract the worms from the finished castings. You just have to wait for them to leave. I'm not a very patient person. Oops, here's another one. Look at that. We found a worm ball inside of a um, avocado pit last time. Good worms being cute for the camera. I know some of the people who are new are like, what do you care about worm balls? It, honestly, it's, it's not anything other than uh, I'm a worm person and I get excited when I see a whole bunch of worms all together hanging out. Uh, you know, there's weirder things in this world, wouldn't you think? Okay, so we're getting all the way and getting this three-month-old stuff moved down so that we'll have ample time or ample space for the feeding today. It's going to be a pureed feeding, but we're going to have a bunch of different kinds of bedding. I've been getting um, some kind of strange packing paper. It says it's completely uh, compostable. Look, another little worm ball. So we are going to test if it is vermi-compostable, because oftentimes those of you who have had worm bins know that just because it says it's compostable does not mean that worms can do it. It normally needs heat. And since a worm bin is not meant to have a bunch of heat, a lot of times those compostable things don't work in a worm bin. So it's just a little bit of trial and error and all of us in the worm community help each other out by showing examples of things that you personally have around in your area. Because I have people all the way from Australia 
to Iceland, to the UK, South America, and then of course the United States where I'm at. So we have people all over the world that have the ability to let us know if you have vermicompostable items. So put in the comments below what things have you seen do work with the worms and what ones do not. All right, let's look at the last feeding. Okay, I'm going to move this dry paper over. And one of the things that you'll see right away here is this shredded cardboard. The shredders in the bin have been doing that. So the roly polies and the springtails are really awesome at taking things that the worms can't eat and turning it into things that the worms can eat. So I rely just as heavily on the worm bin critters, easy for me to say, as I do the worms to get all of my garbage cycled instead of putting it in the landfill. Which, if you're new here, you may not know, but that is my goal. I'm not here to try and grow worms to sell worms or grow worms to... Um, oh, are we going to get it? Eh, not much. But I'm not here to sell worms or sell castings. I have a good-sized yard and a good-sized garden. And so my primary goal, my mission, the worms' mission that they have chosen to accept is to eat my garbage, eat my Amazon boxes, and anything else that I throw in the spin. Now, of course, there are times when the worms cannot, and they do let me know um, if there's plastic in something. Sometimes I will see that it's been pushed up to the top, and I think that's what I consider that the worms have rejected. Now, these things like... Oops, that's cool. Uh, you know, corn cobs, they take you know, probably four, six months to get finished. And the same thing with any kind of avocado pit. You're looking at four to six, even more months if it's the winter time, before they'll be able to eat that kind of food. So you might think, why have I disturbed all these worms? Well, I'm putting them here in this middle area where it is going to be nice and comfortable for them. It's a good moisture. They probably still have some food left. And over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour their liquid pureed feeding on top of some new bedding stuff. So I'm going to move over this old bedding, and we're going to make a nice little pocket here for their feeding. So we have this um, shredded fluff that is supposed to be compostable. So we're going to find out if this is vermicompostable. Now, according to the packaging, um, if I had recycling in my area, which I don't, uh, I could put this in with the paper with my uh, single stream composting. So that, you know, that gives you an idea if you get something that looks like this, kind of looks like insulation a little bit, but it, it's just paper that's been ground up and stuck back together. Uh, if you have that in your area, you might be able to put it in your regular recycling. Now they're going to get their soupy food. This is sort of a deconstructed stuffed green pepper soup. It's, it was never green pepper soup, but I had mice get into the rice, so that's no longer good for the people. And then, of course, there's always the tomatoes and peppers that are left over from the garden. That didn't go into the salsa. So that is what they're going to get for a feeding, but then I'm going to top that off with some prepared bedding to seal all of this in. I'm going to spread that out. And then there it goes. It's going to get some nice bedding on top. Believe it or not, I had cooked bacon and put it, put the oil in a little mason jar on the stove so that I didn't put it down the drain or whatever. Can you believe that some mice fell in there and died? Death by bacon grease. That doesn't sound too bad, does it? Okay, now let's go have a look-see at the brand new bin that is three months old. All right, here is the new bin, and uh, you might be able to see that I do have some gnat problems, and also you can see some little things that look like it's been messed with by a mouse. Here out in the country where I'm surrounded by fields, um, most people are thinking, oh my god, that's the worst thing ever to have mice in your house. But if you don't suck it up and just deal with it, uh, you'll drive yourself nuts because there is no way around it, especially not in a 200-year-old house. So this part of the wedge is the, the oldest part that just started three months ago, and then the feeding zone is down there.
So we're going to take a look at this. We had been covering this with a plastic lid to try and keep some moisture in because the castings are not um, in a large enough volume to keep the moisture of this bed very high. All right, let me put you down. Let's have a look-see. All right, well, this bed is finally starting to look like a real wedge system. Now you can see the brand new stuff, the stuff in progress, and then the stuff that is almost done. So at three months, I would say this bin is doing really well. No near, you know, a little, not near as well as the other one, but pretty good. So if you like this idea of the European night crawlers and the wedge system, I have a playlist that I will put right over here. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video over here. I don't know how they know, but they just know, don't they? All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.